Welcome to FX Masterclass and my name is Ernest Rowe and today's topic is properly tune your regulator at a certain caliber and today's one we're going to concentrate on a 22 caliber and we're going to set it around 900 feet per second and but you want to set it a little higher about 920 then we'll lower it down to 900 to get more more air efficient and more consistent because if you set up around 900 and the regulator set at 900 it's not as quite as efficient it takes more time to recover you're stressing it out all right so we're going to set around 800 875 around there after we lower it down from 920 around or about there first let's find out what the current speed out of the box impact has around and you keep shooting it till what the current speed is now when I'm doing this the power wheel is on max and your valve adjuster is wide open at four all right you will want to get the minimum rake pressure to get 920 feet per second on or about all right Doing this, all right, when, when it costs a little less vibration because you're not going to overpower it, is using the minimum reg pressure. So you lose, use less hammer spring to open the valve, all right? All right, now the reg pressure is 110. Now we're going to increase it to get around 920 feet per second using the 18 grain. All right, you need a, an Allen. I think it's around two and a half or in there. You get, you get, you used to have a certain angle, and you raise it to the right pressure counterclockwise. You just do a little bit. You hear a little pressure builds up. You hear whining, and let's let's see what we got. Uh, about 110 bar, 115. But you know the gauge is between 50 bar and commit. He's kind of guessing between the line. All right. Let's see where we at. Now you're compressing a spring on a regulator, it, it takes time to settle when you adjust it. All right. Now it didn't go that much, now we're going to increase it some more. I think I dropped it. There you go. Let's just go 120 bars. Since I already know what general reg pressure it takes to launch it around 9. 920 or so. There, about 925. That's what we got. Remember, every time you adjust rec pressure, the hammer spring adjuster has to be adjusted even though the power wheel is on max there's a little sidebar here with a set screw and it makes contact with the cam so you you can fine tune the preload on the spring by adjusting the screw here it, where it looks like it's not going anywhere it's kind of lower because there's more rake pressure to open the valve and the velocity is lower all right, now use your little Allen here. You need to turn this, you want to screw in the screw. All right, it can only get about less than a quarter turn at a time. Let's try to do one full revolution. It's a time-consuming process, 
but after you're done you need to document all the setting if you have multiple calibers it's faster to get to this reference point if you write it all down and I'll show you what to write down later all right let's see what we got now maybe you gotta fire quite a shot till uh, the spring untwines and settles then you get your true measurements yeah, it's 885 now. 78. It, it seems like it's pretty consistent. Around, look to me, it's around 880. All right. Now, we need to increase your hammer spring preload. Till the velocity no longer increase, then we have to increase the rake pressure to get it up higher. Let's just do a half a turn, all right, and just, well, right there. Let's just see if it increases more. All right. See, so just by turning a hammer spring adjuster, I got around little over 10 feet per second remember we're aiming for 920 or so all right and don't kind of freak out when the velocity is low but the spring takes a while to adjust sometimes because you are adjusting it now look, to me, the velocity went down a little bit. I need to increase the rake pressure. Or 10 bars, let's say. Let's back, back it out. Another quarter turn. Let's see your rake pressure. Right around Getting, it's go, slowly getting up there, but I believe this hammer spring adjuster needs to be screwed in more because usually 125 is enough to get it up there. Okay, so we got. They're uh, 912. I'll just let it let the spring spread its wing and let it settle. They call it. And kind of make a habit to keep it. I'm shooting fast, so then I'll slow down and keep like you know like five or eight seconds a shot just to see how consistent the numbers is. You see a drop. And go, it'll go back up. Now four. Oh, that was three mags. Like to me, it needs a little more hammer spring. All right, there's a limitation how far you could adjust your preload on your hammer spring. You just can't unscrew it endlessly because it's gonna hit the power wheel cam. When it bottoms out, your wheel is no longer gonna move. So now, that means you need to back it out a turn. Oh. See there. And it's best to have your scuba tank high pressure line attached to the gun because it's going to take a lot of shots as you can see well we're about 915 I think we'll keep it at this setting let's see if it doesn't go any higher than 925 or so 
So it looks like it's settling around 920, 924. Now to get more air efficient, we need to lower the velocity. Now this valve adjuster, actually at the end of it, there's a little, I think it's a six and a half mil rubber ball. It's like a Dural 90, it's a really hard ball. So when the valve opens, it's going to hit this ball and gives it another force, like a, a spring to hit back and shut the valve, get more air efficient out of it. So right now it's fully open. We want to adjust it till the velocity start to drop. That means we have control of the velocity. All right. Let's just do uh, like a one turn. As you notice, I'm not looking at the lines. I'm looking at the, the crony, the numbers. And you know, it, it, it looks like it's dropping. I'm trying to be consistent with this in between shots. All right, let's do another half a turn. Oh, look like Warner. Done with fourth mag. It doesn't go down. Another half a turn. Oh. Do another half. Another half. Another half a turn. Because we had this fully open. Oh, 831, and maybe it went too far down. Let's find out when it settles here. That's when we do it too fast and you're in a hurry. Uh, you miss your target speed, like we did here, 830. Hey, we know we have enough uh, air supply. So we need to open it back up. Let's say uh, one full turn. Oh, back up to 900. Now we're going to start tweaking it. Let's screw it in a quarter. Eight ninety. Now that quarter turn. And I don't know about you, I can hear it. the gun is getting quieter. All right, on our last mag for refill, I hope you can get it all in one shot. But we're getting close. 890. I mean, we're really close to the target speed. It's going to hover around because when you adjust, adjust the valve adjuster and you're hitting this rubber ball, and the rubber ball just kind of gets soft a little bit after you hit it so many times. And you'll see in our numbers where, it's, where it settles. You know, at this point, you should be shooting a group zone and check for accuracy because. It's the slope of the rainbow before the peak. That's where you get your most accuracy and shot count. So I would concentrate on that area. All right, it looked to me, it's very close where we want to set it. And check for speed. You may have to go up, you know, 890, 895, or a little lower to find out the tightest group. And every time you lower the speed, 10, 15 feet per second per group, you gotta make sure the gun settles. I mean, the spring has a time to settle and, and the, the regular pressure and the valve adjuster. All right, like to me, it, it's pretty consistent, all right, at the current speed is set now. I mean, just don't pick on their number, it's on or about. So to have a reference point, shoot a group 
at the speed and see how it is and have a reference point so when you go up and down you can find out the tightest group all right if you have multiple calibers and different length of barrel you need to document the setting what you have now especially when you finally found the most accurate speed for that particular pellet so write it down what you're going to write down is your rake pressure on or about 128 130 bars your valve adjuster i mean there your power wheel is on max and trying to keep this see this power wheel when if you apply pressure here you feel a slide bar go in and max right max at the peak when you go to a it goes it goes in that way all right so you gotta max you gotta measure you gotta find a reference point between the slide bar and the edge here and it's better to use a caliper and you find out okay let's go to this corner to this corner it's set 18.1 all right that's your hammer spring preload then and your valve adjuster you just can't say it's one and a half lines it's not accurate the way to do it is this shoulder here and the actual piece that rotates is a valve adjuster you kind of measure it and you get 7.48 and how many times you take several readings you get the average 7.9 it's more accurate than counting lines because you don't know you're a quarter off 7.9 is a more accurate means of doing it so document all this when what caliber you have what weight of pellet you're shooting and the length of barrel is it a pellet liner or a slug liner and this is your reference point to go back if you need you, you'll change everything because it's totally different setting when you're a 25 and a 30 caliber. All right, when you're competition, you only have one gun, nobody can afford three impacts, but you wanna switch back to 22 from 30 to 20, and, and there's a certain setting. And this process took a long time, a long time, right? A lot, of, a lot of pellets. I went through at least this much a magazine. I think behind the scene, I kind of loaded another one. So I went through about five or six mags to properly tune it at, at, at a certain speed all right so write it all down so when you go back is a quick reference point to adjust your regulator power wheel and then the preload and the bulb adjusts it and you're set all right and this includes this video and any questions or comment drop me a line we'll catch you next topic